So hi there, it's Julie with Steamcat, and pardon the strange light today, I am preparing cyanotypes. And also, pardon my voice, I'm having an allergy attack, so it's a perfect time to be playing with flowers and stuff, right? So the cyanotype was invented by Sir John Herschel in 1842. He invented the process. It uses two chemicals, um, ferric ammonium citrate and potassium ferrous cyanide. It, it's not as nasty as it sounds, even though I'm wearing gloves. Um, this is a very old process. I'm going to shake these up because I'm actually going to mix some stuff up here in a minute. Um, a year later, though, in 1843, Anna Atkins uh, started on the first book of cyanotypes. She was a botanist, and her first book was all about algae. And there are very few copies of those books still available and intact, and they're awesome. Um, anyway, this is the classic dry cyanotype. Um, this this was a, a dandelion and a bit of, I think, clover, and a few little sprinkles of dandelion fluff. I have a couple of wet, what they call wet cyanotypes here. This one is some leaves, and what I did was I put the leaves down, I sprinkled some vinegar on it, added some salt, some turmeric, which got this yellow color, and then I covered it in plastic wrap, which got all these wrinkles, and I exposed it. And this is another one of my favorites. That was a wet cyanotype. Now, cyanotypes are made by exposing to sunlight or UV light. This one was exposed in a, a nail light, and it took about 30 minutes, but I got it. Uh, wet cyanotypes generally take longer to expose. I mean, once your image is exposed, then you rinse it under water to get rid of all of the chemicals and dry it. I put mine in a second rinse with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. What that does is immediately bl bring out the blues. It takes a few days, a couple of days, for this to really turn blue, but as you can see, some of these colors get really spectacular. These are, I showed you before, the Jacquard cyanotype chemicals, part A and part B. You shake them up, mix equal parts, and you got it. So I have a mixing bowl and a brush and some watercolor paper. You can do this on typing paper, uh, any kind of paper. Uh, people do cyanotypes on canvas, on even wood or glass. If you do wood or glass, you have to prepare what's called a gelatin medium, and I've never done one of those yet. So. We're going to stick to good old-fashioned paper. So, let's turn some lights out. There's not going to be a whole lot to see right now, because we need a low light. And I'm using lead light here because, I mean, it, it does have UV, but it has less UV in it, generally speaking, than uh, incandescent or sunlight. So, we're going to pour part one up to the top of the cap. Actually, I'm doing part B. Okay, we'll pour that in. Now we'll take part A and we'll pour that up to the top of the cap. A bit more, just like that. Now I mix the chemicals up really good. You'll see it's turning a bit of a greenish color. You really can't see. I'm going to have to show you this in the low light. It's okay because I've worked in this low light before and not have any trouble. So when you get it mixed, you evenly coat your paper. 
and you can go edge to edge or you can you know, leave some gaps in your paper, put a border, you know, whatever you want, it's up to you. The, the idea though is to get it as evenly coated as possible. Now, when this is done, off camera that it goes in and it will sit in there and dry. These take, you know, depending on the temperature and everything, about 30 minutes to dry. You can give them the next till the next day. I'm gonna pause this and do some more uh, do some more paper and then I'll come back with the cyanotype that I've had exposing outdoors. Okay, I am back. This is, I'll probably turn my light up a little bit more. This is a piece of paper that I exposed a little earlier. It's an oak leaf, but the way you do these, you just lay your items down and cover it with glass to make it flat, keep it from blowing around and expose it outdoors. Um, it could be anywhere from five minutes to a lot longer depending on the light. So let me pull this back. Oh look, there's something there. So I'm gonna go take a second and rinse this off and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and this has been rinsed. It's been run with a little uh, hydrogen peroxide and there's the leaf. And there's the print. And see, I was talking about you can leave, you know, borders and interesting gaps. It, you know, this is an art as much as it's a science. And I think that's one reason I've always been drawn to photography in general and cyanotypes lately in particular because there's this interesting intersection of art and science. Um, you may have questions. I may have answers. Um, one thing that may be going through your mind is, Julie, you've got this fancy new laser. It's a UV diode laser, isn't it? Why, yes it is. And that's one of the things I'm going to do with my next batch of paper, is, is give it a shot and see what I got. It may not work, but we never know until we try. So, um, oh, another question you may have is how many pieces of paper did I get w with that uh, preparation? Uh, two caps full, one cap full of each part. Uh, it coated about seven of these sheets. They are six by nine inch watercolor sheets. So basically I'll let this sit and dry and after it's dried I'll spritz it again with a little bit of water and then I have a heat press that I put it in. I don't use the heat but the pressure from the press will will straighten this out and and flatten the paper for me and I, I leave it in there for about 24 hours. That's about all it takes. So thank you for viewing. Like and subscribe. Share and enjoy. Uh, Actually, I have some of my uh, cyanotypes in my Etsy shop, and I'll share a link to that. They're printables, and so you can print them and frame them yourself. So I'm going to go off and take care of my allergy throat now. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you later.